with with Alec Murdoch and and how he's been looking day in and day out in the courtroom, a lot of people have noticed the rocking. He tends to do a lot of rocking, especially when his son Paul's name is brought up. We've seen crying, excessive crying, not to be gross, but like drainage from his nose coming out many days. Um, we're seeing a lot of this. What does that body language mean? Dr. Carroll, want to pick your brain. Tell us what you're seeing as you're watching this guy day in and day out in the court, please. Well, he does do a lot of uh, movements that are self-soothing, you know, um, particularly rocking back and forth. That is known as, as something, if, if he's feeling really upset, um, all kinds of emotions that, you know, whether it's guilt or whether it's fear or whether it's, you know, just anxiety, um, that is a way that he's trying to soothe himself. And it's interesting that, you know, it's particularly prominent when his son is brought up. Right, right. So that's interesting. So the rocking is self-soothing, Dr. Carroll. This this is helpful to hear because we we see it in, in folks on our wonderful courties on Twitter who are watching a lot. Here's the rocking again. It's almost like you could set your watch to it, especially when evidence about Paul comes in. Being a thief doesn't make him a murderer. Certainly not. So they've got to make that link. How did the thievery translate into uh, the, the, the need or the, the, the want to commit murder? Was the pressure so bad on him? Dr. Carroll, would you speak to this? A lot of people looking at this say, yeah, the evidence is terrible, but how bad does it have to be psychologically to kill your son? When you think about killing a spouse, we see that more commonly in America, sadly, but the killing of a child, less common, as you know. Uh, would you speak to that, please? Well, you know, it's interesting that, um, I mean, people have been saying that, that I mean, the, the idea would be that he killed his son um, because that he, because of the voting accident, because the financial, same thing with his wife. Um, but, you know, I think underneath, it, I don't think it was just that cold, calculating way of thinking about it, the logical way. I think that there was really some rage at his son, at least, um, for getting him into this mess. Not that his son got him into all the mess that he's in because of all his financial issues. But, so in other words, at, at a gut level, I think there really was a rage towards his son uh, for bringing all this to the fore, and that and that's how he was able to kill him in such a brutal way. Carol Lieberman, you just said it that that could be the state's link. What you just said uh, to all of our viewing audience, that is what has been missed. The state has yet to say, and then this financial mess that the kid largely got him in caused the rage that overcame him and drove him to commit this, uh, this heinous act. Uh, Dr. Carol Lieberman, thank you kindly for that. Um, Dr. Carroll, let me ask you a question, please, uh, if I may. With respect to, you know, Alec Murdoch and the way he's viewed by some of these other investigators and people with with communities in, in, in the criminal justice system, you know, it's, they're close communities. You get to know each other. The defense attorneys know the prosecutors, everybody, mm -hmm. law enforcement, you know, you you know everyone. And it's it's very clear here. They know him from, from the outset. Um, but then to, to take it to this point where despite knowing him and if he was given the benefit of the doubt in the beginning, you know, certainly not, it says something, doesn't it, that they've said, this is our guy, the guy that used to be one of us, used to be a prosecutor and handle our cases. Um, would you speak to that, please? Yes. Um well, you know, I think what was obvious, even in the, um, with the 13th jurors, the group, uh, and with the people who knew him, you know, it's more how they feel about him. When they were, when the 13th jurors were asked about, um, could there be a second shooter? It wasn't so, they, they, not that they really had a reason why there couldn't be, you know, some kind of an explanation, but clearly they don't like him. And I think that that is what is um, affecting the people who knew him there too. Now, I think some of the people uh, who knew him really liked him and don't want this, you know, are hoping that this really isn't true and that he didn't do this. But um, he must have gotten, in all his work, he must have made some enemies even before all of this happened. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, apparently the Murdoch name was a name that would kind of instill fear 
in people there. And, and I think that's also, that context is really important, right? Because he might have been more feared than he was revered uh, because of the long lineage of very powerful men in this Murdoch family.